Okay, Anis, in this video, we're gonna cover page four and five from Baston's Piano for Adult, book two. This will be the very first piece that I'll introduce to you from chapter one. Meet me in St. Louis, comma, Louis. Uh, the words were done by Andrew Sterling and music was written by Carrie Mills and we're gonna just play this beautiful piece in your version, simple version, okay? So why don't I just play the piece for you before you start learning it? Here we go. It's in three, four times, key of C major. Um, we're gonna have a melody in the right hand and very simple accompaniment in the left hand, which is mainly made of some chords. Here we go. One, two, three. Nice piece, huh? Okay, so let's just take some time to go over some important points that I do want to address um, in this video. Uh, we already know the basics about this piece. It's in key of C major and the time signature is 3-4. So we know three beats are grouped in each measure. Uh, and you could feel this is like a little swinging dance like triple meter uh, piece. Uh, we have melody in the right hand throughout the piece and it's like basically four bar phrases. Uh, however, in the left hand we have accompaniment mainly made of a triads, okay? So first thing you I want you to take a look at it will be probably the left hand which I'm gonna show you right now I want you to go over all your left hand chords first and see what the name of the chord for each um, chords that you see in, uh, in, in the accompaniment part so for example first phrase first four measure from bar one to four your left hand has a very simple C major triad and in its root position and it has a staccato mark so your touch here your articulation will be a very light bouncing motion from your wrist make sure you relax so one two three Okay, every time, every bar, the second beat has this accompaniment in the left hand, the C major triad. Right hand, uh, the first phrase, where I'm referring to the first phrase, has a four bar, all uh, made of half note followed by quarter notes. Okay, except for the last bar, four bar four. So first three measure has half note, two, and quarter note, half note, and then quarter notes. And this is where you're gonna have a crossing fingers, bar three, okay? So make a note of that, the crossing finger technique that we already learned, okay? So one, two, three, one, two, and prepare to cross under for your G that comes uh, should be come with thumb, uh, finger number one, okay? So crossing under after four, one here, okay? Bum, one, two. So except for the first three measure, the rhythm, the rhythmic motif you see at the last bar of the first phrase, which is bar four, will be quarter and half. Make sense? So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, okay? So this rhythmic motif will repeat a few times um, throughout the piece. So I want you to get very comfortable with this rhythm, well, rhythmic motif, okay? So clapping uh, the rhythm as you count along might be very, very helpful idea to understand the rhythmic motif. <laughs> So again, let's go back to the accompaniment. 
one more time. So first phrase, simple C. Then the second phrase, which starts from bar five, now we're moving to F major triad. Here we go. Okay, so F, A, C. Those are the three notes for what we call F major triad in root position form. And we get this for the left hand. And right hand will quickly shift to A with two. Please make sure you check the note and the finger numbers for every beginning of the phrases, okay? So second phrase from bar five will be on A with two, and here's your left hand accompaniment. Right, same motif for right hand melody. Half note, followed by quarter, and your left hand has that F major triad. So here we go, one, two, three, one, two, three, and this I am bar seven, which you have G dotted half note, tied to another dotted half note. Same note, G, means, which means you have to hold this note, G, for six counts long. So here's your DL beat, and your left hand will come in on two, three, one, two, three, okay? So this is your first two phrases. Let me put it together. One, two, three, one, two, cross under, different rhythm, and play. good so practice your melody line versus the left hand accompaniment and of course at a slower tempo when you're learning it okay then we're on bar nine uh, this will be phrase number three and guess what it's exact repeat, same repeat that we already played uh, from the first phrase this returns Exact same, right, as the first phrase. Now, we are on page five, top, bar 13. This is, this is where we start seeing um, accidental sign. In this case, it is a sharp sign. As you all know, there are five accidentals in music, sharps, flats, double sharps, double flats and there's a natural. For in this case, your left hand accompaniment is having F sharp as accidental notes and you've got C and D together. We already learned this chord, okay? Spelling, again, F sharp, C, D. We call it D7 chord. It's in a first inversion position, right? Without the A. So we're having this D7 chord <clears throat> joining as an accompaniment for this melody in the right hand, which is made of, again, half note on A and another half note on the down B. And you got D dotted half note followed by a quarter. So dotted half note, three counts plus one, four beats long. So you have to make sure you keep your D, okay, for four beats. Um, so practice your left hand first. One, D7, three, one, two, three, right? And there's another rest, and your left hand will have a little melodic line. Three notes. G, A, B, okay? This is gonna be bar 15 and 16. So practice your left hand, obviously, first. Now, adding your melody is not a problem. We'll just do it slowly together. Here we go. Part 13, phrase number four. One, two, three, one, two, three. Then keep your right hand, hold it, and your left hand join. Okay, we're done. Now, we continue with this line by shifting your melody line. You ended on D with four, correct? Now we're gonna change, shift our hand position and play same note D, this time with finger number two. And there's another accident introduced after D, D sharp, wow. This is your D sharp key, right? D and there's a D sharp. Now bar 17 is where we have some shifting motion again, your left hand accompaniment your notes G sharp D E okay place your finger with correct fingering hopefully five two one so this is what we call E7 chord okay it's a seventh chord 
and first inverted position. So learn this left hand and again light bell staccato on second count. One, two, three. One, two, three. Happens two times. Bar 19 is where your chord changes. Your left hand will be in A minor root position. So learn your chord and know their position, what, which inversion they're using, either root position, first inversion, or second inversion. Okay, so I'm gonna start from the pickup uh, notes to 17. So this is gonna be a bar 16, second beat. Down beat is empty, here we go. One, two, three, 17. One, right hand, left hand, one, left, right, there's A minor. Okay, this phrase is done, okay? So this will be a challenging phrase, to, to be honest. So I want you to practice this phrase maybe a little more than the other phrases until you really master them, okay? So again, learn the chords, add your melody, and make sure you keep a good balance between the melody in the right hand and accompaniment in the left hand. So let me play this phrase one more time, okay? One. Down beat. Please make sure you maintain the spirit of dancing or swinging motion throughout the whole piece. Okay, I am on bar 20. Okay, so after the downbeat, tie notes, we have a G sharp. So you end it on A with a tie. Then you're gonna go to G sharp, another accidental note. Okay, so we have so many accidentals, which we actually are using sharp sign for many notes. Please remember that an accidental is a sharp, flat, natural, double sharp, double flat. These are the signs that appears in the music and it applies for the duration of the measure, okay? Only for the measure, that's what it means. A bar line cancels an accidental, okay? That follows. So after A tie, we have a G sharp, one single G sharp as an accidental note, and you, you've gotta have this fingering, okay? Uh, please, you start on two for G sharp and cross under, move to A. We try to avoid using thumb on the black keys. So that's why you, be, you need to be on two for G sharp and move your thumb under so you prepare for A. The next note is a D, okay? So D, now guess what? Your left hand accompaniment, the D7 first inversion position came back. So D left, D7, left hand again, and there's your G, okay? So the chord changes. D7 two times, bar 21 and 22. And you got 23 coming in with G chord, G major, try it, root position on count three, okay? So this is gonna be another challenging phrase. Let me play this for you together. One, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, G. Now this is where you're gonna cross your finger number four over thumb. G, right? So you could easily go down to F and move down. And guess what's happening? Bar 25. After these three transitional notes, we're back to your original key, C major. Clearly, we're back home and we're actually repeating the same phrase that we already played earlier two times, right? So here it comes. Ready for 29? Bar 29. Now we gotta shift our position, especially for left hand. From C chord, we're going to F just one time. Your melody in the right hand will start on A. One, left, right. Now, this is where you have to really prepare for the next left hand, which will be just simple harmonic seconds. Okay, I'm talking about measure 30. F and G, again, light staccato bounce after the melody. D, here's your left, 
and we finish with a clear C chord, C major triad. If you have a damper pedal, please add them for the ending line, I mean ending chord, and you can be slightly slow. Two, three, and make sure you release both hands very gently and nicely. Uh, your very last melodic note, C, dotted half note, has another dotted half note tied, okay? So, I just quickly went over the whole piece, phrase by phrase, letting you know what's happening in the accompaniment and how to play your melody. Uh, there are a few things I want you to keep in your mind. Balance between the melody and accompaniment. You always need to make sure we hear your melody clearly um, throughout the, the piece. Not only making sure they are projected enough, you have to sing along, like how you're dancing, okay, or swinging. So make sure you drop your whole weight down to the bottom of the key for every downbeat to make sound very nice, okay? So one and three is a little up, down is always a little deeper, okay? One, two, three, and here. Um, so every time you have a half note or long tie notes, please use your whole body weight to make a nice rounded tone, okay? Um, oh, well, just for fun, I'm gonna try to play this piece in a slightly faster tempo to see if how uh, it affects the mood of the piece. It says moderato for your tempo marks, which is the tempo I chose to play for you at the beginning. However, if you get really comfortable with the piece, why not try and slide it faster and feel for it, okay? Here we go, one, two, three, more. practicing this um, piece, your very first piece in this class. Okay, meet me in St. Louis, Louis. All right, I'll see you in next video. Thank you so much for watching.